bit of a confusion, I think, with planets in the first house. So for me, the ascendant is health, the environment, early environment, and the body. That's how I understand it. And if we have planets there, but they are not very close to the cusp of the first house, but a little more towards the second house, but not in the second house yet, are they less strong in their, let's, let's say, if it's Uranus, are they less strong within the early environment than if they were closer to the thing? Or how or would you interpret it differently if they are not as close to the ascendant? Our next question has to do with the strengths of planets in relationship to the houses they find themselves in. And the question is, if a planet is far from the cusp of a house, does that planet still affect that house powerfully? Within traditional astrology, one of our axioms is that the closer a planet is to the cusp of a house, the stronger that planet is within the affairs of that house. And this is something that we see a lot, or that at least I see a lot, within the context of a lot of the family-based astrology that I do. If a person has the ruler of their 10th house in their first house and conjuncts their first house cusp, that person really looks a lot like their mother. If a person has the ruler of their 4th house in their first house and conjuncts the first house cusp, that person really looks a lot like their father. If that person has the ruler of the fourth and the tenth house in their first house, then whichever planet is closer to the cusp of the first house is going to be the planet of the parents that that person physically looks more like. So that's one of the ways how I've tested this theory within the context of my traditional astrological practice. It works for me, and I think it works for me because it works in general, and you can test it out for yourself whenever you see this showing up within a person's chart. Ask them, hey, you have the rule of your fourth house in your first house. Do you look a lot like your dad? Do you share a lot of your dad's characteristics and tendencies? And I dare say 8.5 times out of 10, the answer is going to be a resounding yes. Planets will always be stronger if they are closer to the cusp of the house that they are in and they will be weaker the farther they are from the cusp of the house that they are in, which is why the five degree rule exists within traditional astrology. The five degree rule is that if a planet is within five degrees of the next house cusp and in the same sign as the next house cusp, then that planet should be considered to be in the next house even if it is physically located in the previous house. So if you have a planet that is very close to your second house cusp and within five degrees of your second house cusp, that planet is going to be more effective on the affairs of your second house, especially if it's in the same sign as your second house cusp, than if that planet were in the middle of the first house and very far from the second house cusp. Now, different people use the five degree rule differently within traditional astrology. Some people say that the five degree rule needs to take into consideration the fact that the planet might be in the same sign as the next house cusp. And very often we also see within traditional astrology that the planet simply has to be within five degrees of the next house cusp. I tend to err on the side of preferring the planets to be in the same sign as the next house cusp, but that isn't the only opinion on the matter. Now, when it comes to planets such as Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, potentially in the first house, we know that the first house is representing the self and the health of the native within this lifetime. It's also representing the personality and the likes and the dislikes and basically everything that makes a person who that person is, is held within the ascendant from a traditional astrological perspective. From a modern Uranian astrology perspective, we also say that the first house corresponds with the environment of a person, which is why very often when a person has Uranus conjuncts their first house cusp, it can represent divorce being a major factor within the environment of that person and divorce being a major theme within that person's life in general. 
So this is another version of astrology altogether. I dare say that if you're practicing traditional astrology, you do not have to burden yourself with this notion of the ascendant as environment. It's a wonderful thing to know. It's a very special thing to know. It can be a great thing to know, but you don't have to burden yourself with the thought of the ascendant as the environment. And if you're practicing Uranian astrology, you don't have to burden yourself with this thought of the ascendant as the personality. Because from a Uranian astrology perspective, the midheaven is going to give us information on the personality, not necessarily the ascendant. So the point is that we always want to be mindful that we know which system of astrology we're practicing. And when it comes to planets within the first house or within any house, we want to remember that planets are going to be far more impactful when those planets are conjunct the cusps of those houses than if those planets were just located in those houses very far from those house cusps. And definitely a planet is not going to have any impact in a house at all if that planet is as far from the house cusp of that house as possible and within five degrees of the next house cusp as well as in the same sign as the next house cusp. A planet will have no impact on the ascendant at all if it falls within the five degree rule in so far as the second house is concerned. Okay, does that answer your question? Almost. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, tell me. If, let's say, Pluto or Uranus, whatever these guys, uh, so, so nothing, no ruler, but, but one of those uh, modern planets is in the ascendant, but not within the five degree rule, but not very close to the ascendant either. They still have a say, but not as strongly. Is that okay. correct, right? <laughs> saying if it's correct, and he's saying right at the same time. You tell me if it's correct. Anyway, the next question has to do with whether or not the modern planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, in the ascendant, we shouldn't even say in the ascendant because the ascendant is in a house. The ascendant is a degree. The next question is whether or not Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto in the first house, but not very close to the first house cusp, are going to have any major augmenting effect on the personality of the native at all. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, we know, are the modern planets, and therefore they are not the rulers of any sign to the zodiac, which means they can't be rulers of any of the 12 terrestrial houses. Because the only way you can be a ruler of one of the 12 terrestrial houses is if you are a ruler of one of the signs of the zodiac. And Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto do not rule signs of the zodiac, regardless of what anyone has ever said to you in your entire existence. Because when we understand the rudiments of traditional astrology, we also understand why that can never be the case. However, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are very important factors within a chart in general. However, they are only important based on their exact aspects. And let's soften that a bit because exact aspects are something that we rarely find within birth charts. So they are important based on the aspects they are creating. I tend to focus on them purely based on their hard aspects, as well as based on some of the other hard aspects that we don't usually talk about, such as the semi-square and the sesqui quadrate and the antitia and the contra-antitia and the parallel and the contra-parallel. Those tend to be how I bring Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto into my work at large. The other way I bring Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto into my work at large is if they are conjunct the angles of a chart or very close to the angles of a chart. If I find Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto just within the houses associated with those angles, such as the first house, the 10th house, the 7th house, and the 4th house, or if I find Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto in those houses, but not very close to the actual degree of the angles of those houses, then for me, they're not going to be very important in the overall analysis or interpretation that we can derive from that specific house. And that is because Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, 
they work best through their conjunctions or through their hard aspects. And independent of that, I don't really have much to say about them. Sure, they definitely do work through their soft aspects as well, but the point is they have to be doing something. They can't just be floating around in empty space for it to seem very important to me. I need them to be doing something within the chart for their importance to shine through in general. I didn't understand if that included being conjunct and angle. Uh, yes, that, okay, so which means that they will be important if they are having an exact conjunction, square, opposition, semi-square, sesquiquadrate, antitia, contra-antitia, parallel, contra-parallel, with the angles within a chart. So if you have Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto having any of those hard aspect relationships with any of the angles within your chart, they're going to be very important. They're also going to be very important if they're having any of those hard aspect relationships with any of the planets within your chart, especially with planets that can rule houses. So you having Uranus square Neptune in your birth chart doesn't mean anything whatsoever, and it never will, because Uranus and Neptune do not rule anything specifically for you within your birth chart. Your life may be problematic for other reasons, but it's not problematic because you have Uranus in a square relationship with Neptune. So we want the hard aspects of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. From a natal perspective, their soft aspects can also be descriptive. However, from the perspective of their relationship with the angles, we need for them to be very close to the angles in order for them to be impactful because if they're not close and they're just floating around, then there's nothing that we can really say about them just based on their presence in the sky. They have to actually be doing something for us to register them as having a grave impact or a great impact within the context of the chart we're reading.